Hello, I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. In this video, I am going to show you how to set your high and low thresholds on the ADS 1115. This is the 16 bit analog to digital converter with two or four channels of input that you can analyze. And in the previous videos, I've introduced you to the 11, ADS-1115 and show you all the different things that it can be used for. And it does have a wide range. It can range anywhere between mere microvolts to as high as 5.1 volts. So I'm going to show you how to set the limits. Now, I've shown you how to set the bits to configure the, re the register so the ADS knows how to perform the function. Now we did disable the high and low threshold because I just wanted the alert ready pan to pulse every time the conversion is completed. And that was it. This time we're going to actually use the high and low threshold. And we're going to see how the alert ready pan works according to the high and low thresholds. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set the registers. Now, in the previous videos, I have shown how to uh, change the bits. Now, you'll probably remember this uh, uh, picture. Uh, this is the 16 bits. Uh, the high threshold, by default, when the device is first powered on, is 32,768 units. Now, keep it in mind, uh, we're going to be referring this number to units. And I'm going to show you why here in a moment. Low threshold can be set to negative 32,768. Now, don't get hung up on the negative part because the ADS-1115 cannot measure negative voltages. It can only measure positive voltage. But I will show you how to measure negative voltages. There is a way to do it, and I will show you how to do it. But in the meantime, just don't worry about the negative. Uh, we will cover that later on in these videos. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some minor changes to the code that we used previously. Now, as you can see here, uh, this is where we were uh, retrieving data from the ADS. That has not changed. The only thing I did change is because I added this part to show the state of the alert ready pan. I want to show you how it fluctuates according to the high and low settings. So let's go up here back to the top. Uh, of course, none of this has changed. Uh, the only thing I did add up here is these two lines. Uh, I'm using the float function. I'm going to set the variable called high limit to three. Uh, this is going to represent three volts. Uh, if I wanted to, uh, I could put 0. If I wanted to, it just depends. Um, it's going to be the same thing whether you use 3 or 3.0. But float allows the, the variable to contain a decimal number. And it comes in very important because the ADS does not understand decimals. So what can we do? Well, first of all, it doesn't, won't understand these two numbers. Because remember, the ADS go by units. So what we need to do is we need to figure out how many units it will take to equal 3.3 volts or and 2.8 volts. Now, of course, we have the connections, which that didn't change. We've got our registers, that didn't change. Uh, one thing I did change uh, was the configuration register because now that we're going to use the high and low thresholds, I want to make sure that we do the minor configuration to use those two uh, registers. Now, this part I did not change. We're still going to use the single end continuous conversion for 5 volts reading on A0. What I did change on this part was the least, least significant byte. Uh, here, you'll see that this is different than what we used before. I've set this to go to 64 samples per second. It's a little faster, um, which is fine. It's just, you know, you, 
can set however many samples you want. Uh, change it to window mode, which I will go into more details about the different modes that you can use. Uh, you have traditional mode and window mode, and I will go into detail about that in another video. And finally, we have the alert ready pin. Now, in the previous video, we had it set to pulse every time the conversion was ready. Well, this time, we're going to have the alert ready pin pulse high, or go active high, after the fourth conversion. The reason I do that is because if the value is going to exceed the limit or the threshold, I want to make sure it's correct because you're going to have some fluctuations when it reads these uh, measurements. So to confirm and before it uh, triggers the alert ready pin to go high, I want to have it for confirmations that it's exceeded the threshold. And that's what that setting is for. Now you could choose one, two, or four. It's entirely up to you. But I have this one set for four. Next we have the pin setups, which, you know, that hasn't changed. Uh, baud rate, wire. Um, the other part I added was these two lines. Now this is where we get to have the Arduino do the math. Now here we're going to convert the whole number, which is 3 volts and 2.8 respectively, and convert it into how many units would equal to that value. Now in a previous video we had to multiply the units by 186.5 microvolts to get the voltage. Here we're going to go do the opposite. We're going to take the 3 volts and 2.8 volts, divide it by the 186.5 microvolts, and then we got to round it. And here I'll show you why. Uh, if we do my calculator here, we're going to see that if you take 3 and divide it by 186.5 microvolts, we get 16,085.79088 blah blah blah. Well, the problem is the ADS does not understand decimal numbers. So what we need to do is round this to the next whole number, in which this case would be 16,086 because it's 5 and greater. So since this is 7, is going to go to the next higher whole number, which is going to be the 6. Now, the same thing with the 2.8. Uh, all we got to do is take 2.8, divide it, and we get 15,013.4. So if we do the round function, it's going to round this down to 15,013. So these two numbers is what we need to add to the, AD, uh, the ADS for the high and low. So the next command we're going to do is we're going to tell the ADS we want the high threshold register. Now remember, the, thresh, the threshold register is 16 bits long, but we can only send eight bytes at a time, or eight bits at a time. So we need to divide the 16 bits into two groups of eight. So we're going to take the first high byte of the variable high, which is bits eight through 15, send it to the ADS. Then we're going to send the low byte, which is bits zero through seven, to the ADS. And then we wait for a confirmation that it, it received the command. We're going to then give it 10 milliseconds to complete the task, and then we're going to do the same thing to the low threshold. We're going to point to the th low threshold. We're going to send the high byte first of the low, and then we're going to send the low byte of the low threshold, and then confirm that the ADS did accept the command. Now we can send the configuration to the register. We're going to send the most significant byte, which did not change, and we're going to send the new values to the, low, the least significant byte configuration register. 
and of course we're going to check for errors. You always want to check for errors because if something goes wrong, this will give you an idea if there's a problem in the communication. Now that completes the setup. Now we're ready to retrieve data. And I wrote this part. Uh, everything stays the same. Uh, all through this section here stays the same, except this part. Now I added this part because I wanted to show you what the status of the alert ready pin at certain times. So I added this here to show what the state of the ready pin is. Now, once we have it coded, now we're ready to upload it to the Arduino. Now, you can see I've got confirmation it's been uploaded. Now I'm ready to run the program. Now, as you can see, it's accepted it. Now, you'll notice here the voltage, I have a capacitor connected to this, and I want it to store voltage in it. And as you can see, it's leaking voltage, which is fine. I just want to show you how this works. And right now, it's only showing one half of a volt. And it's been pretty steady between 5.4 and 5.3. And as you can see, it's fluctuating a little bit. But look to the right. You'll see that the alert ready pin is currently active. And why is that? Remember, the high threshold is set to 3 volts, and the low threshold is set to 2.8 volts. So as you can see, since I am below 2.8 volts, the, active, the alert ready pin is now active. Now, watch what happens when I apply voltage to it. Now, you'll see here, the voltage has changed to 3.262. But you'll notice it still has the alert ready pin active. Remember, the high threshold is set to 3 volts. So, of course, I have it over 3 volts. So, let me go ahead, disconnect the power. Now, you'll see as the capacitor drains, the voltage is starting to drop. Now watch what happens when it reaches 3 volts. You'll notice the alert ready pin now turns off. We are below 3 volts. Now, remember the low threshold is set to 2.8. So what's going to happen is right now we're down to 2.84. Now watch what happens to the alert ready pin. Now that we're below 2.8, now the ready pin has or the alert pin has now become active. And this is how the high and low thresholds work in conjunction with the alert ready pin. Whatever your threshold is set to will correspond to the state of the alert ready pin. If it goes high or below or, you know, in this case, it's has to be within 3 and 2.8 volts, otherwise the alert ready pin will be active. And this is how it works in conjunction. So as you can see, it's simple to use. Uh, you let the Arduino do the math and you also let it send the command or the instructions over to the ADS. Now you have your high limit, your low limit, and let it convert. And any time the boundaries are exceeded, the Arduino will raise the alert ready pin to positive to let you know there's a problem. It's over the limit. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Now, if you need to change anything, all you have to do is go back up here and change the value of what you want, and the Arduino will do the rest. It may take up a few bytes extra in your programming, which is fine. Uh, if you want to, you can always enter the data manually. But why do that when the Arduino can do all the math for you without you having to lift a finger? 
Well, that takes care of this video. Uh, I have shown you how to set the high and low thresholds and how the registers work in conjunction with the alert ready pin. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you like the video, be sure to click like. And if you have any questions, uh, remember I do have all the lines numbered. So if you see uh, a question that you want to ask, feel free to. Uh, be sure to click subscribe so you can be notified when the next video comes up. Well, I am your host, Mr. Fixit. Hope to see you next time.